Miles Montego was king of the streets as a high-level drug trafficker. When Miles meets Vanessa, he's drawn to her beauty and spirituality. As their connection grows, both are tested to their last ounce of faith in God and each other. I'm in love with a church girl. Rated R. Welcome back to What the Heaven Did I Just Watch? A podcast that reviews and laughs at the absurdity that is Christian movies and media. I'm your host, Kevin Crow. What if, hypothetically, somebody said, Hey, let's make a movie with really, really bad music, a really, really bad plot, terrible acting, and let's cast Ja Rule in the lead role. Well, you don't have to worry, because they made a movie like that. And it's just as bad as you think it would be. I didn't. I had no idea that this movie existed, and I don't know. It came out apparently in 2013. Never had any idea. Probably because I don't really search for Christian movies all that much, or I haven't over the last several years. But now that I have this podcast, I like to watch them and make fun of them. And it's fun. So, come along with me on this ride. This movie gets 6%. On Rotten Tomatoes, 6%. And shockingly, the audience score is 63%. Because, of course, Christian audiences love it because it just talks about God. It could be a literal pile of horse shit that speaks and is like, God is cool. And, and they'd be like, hell yeah, two thumbs up. So let's, let's read some of the reviews. Scott Foundus of Variety says, Even having God on the production team can't save this church girl from its heavy-handed sermonizing. Stephen Boone says, For myself and most folks expecting a movie, it is too transparent an infomercial for the church to move the mountain. Miriam says, A message film with the narrative sophistication of a recruiting pamphlet. So yeah, this movie sucks. But I'm going to talk about it. Because God damn it, if I spent... This movie is two hours long. And I watched it twice. So if I spent four hours watching this movie... The least you can do is listen to this short podcast about it. So the opening credits roll, and everything's normal until it gets to the part where it says, Executive Producer God. How corny is it to have Executive Producer God, even if every literally every person in the movie is a Christian? I don't know how many of you are familiar with the, the rapper, Christian rapper T-Bone, but he also has a major role in this film. He plays... Ja Rule's best friend. So the movie starts out with Ja Rule. His name is Miles in the movie, but I'm going to call him Ja Rule during this whole podcast. It starts out with Ja Rule and his friends sitting at a table, and they're all like talking, and they bring out these huge stacks of money, and they give it to Ja Rule. It's kind of vague about what they're doing, but it turns out that they're all giving him this money to invest in his business, which is promotion music promotion and the acting is just awful it's just so bad between ja rule t-bone and then the other his group is has five people so the other three people i think they have one line between them in the entire movie not only is the acting awful but the music is also atrocious so any scene there's like it, it feels like you're watching a horror movie and the music just doesn't fit anywhere there's maybe like two scenes in the entire film where the music actually fits what's what's happening on screen so ja rule takes the cash he goes back home to his mom who is also a terrible actress and she's like you need to find yourself a church girl he's like church huh i remember church i never really liked it because the stained glass windows and the music was horrible and conveniently while they're sitting there talking a commercial comes on the tv for Sandals Resorts, who plays a major role in sponsoring this movie, apparently, because the mom's like, Sandals Resorts? I've always wanted to go there. The product placement in this movie is just so fucking terrible and obvious. Then he leaves and he says, All right, Ma, holla. And she says, What is holla, Miles? There are literally zero people on Earth who don't know what holler means. So then we get our first view of the cops in this movie who are after Ja Rule because they presume that he's a drug dealer. He's got a million dollar house, $300,000 car, and he's hanging out with all these people who 
they are looking at. So he thinks they're, they're thinking, yeah, he's a drug dealer. And one of the cops is Stephen Baldwin. So the acting there, you know, is going to be top notch as well. But there's like, it's just so angsty. And the, and the music, when they show the cops anytime, it's just like the, the worst score in the history of film. But they're like, we got to get this guy. This guy, he's making more money in a week than we make in a year, chief. We've been working around the clock trying to get this guy. And then the chief's like, well, you got nothing. Get me something on him. It's just the most generic cops. Everything is so generic. I want the report on my desk tomorrow morning. That cliche. The next scene is really weird because it's where Ja Rule meets his love interest in this movie. He passes this silver convertible and there's a good looking girl driving it. Well, he like cuts off a car and turns down the road to go follow her. He's flying after her and he doesn't make it because he gets pulled over by a cop. I think the cop is, tr- I think it's trying to be like a funny part of the movie because the cop is, it's almost like super trooper ish. But he comes over to the window and he like drops down real quick, like a tea bag. And he's like, Where are you going so fast? Another cliche cop, you know. The next scene is all the cops in the in one room and they're all going over the whole crew. So they reveal like, here's his right hand man, T-Bone. And here's the other three guys who don't do or say anything and don't serve any purpose in this movie whatsoever. And let's throw in some more dramatic music while we're at it. We got to get this guy. Just whatever you do, get this guy. I think they say get this guy like 10,000 times in the movie. Ja Rule gets a phone call and it's his friend Nick. Who's like, uh, he reminds me of like a retired mobster sort of dude. I don't know if he used to be in business with him, but Ja Rule calls him his broker. Nick's like, hey man, we're having a party. Why don't you come on over? And Ja Rule's like, all right, I'll be there in about an hour. And and then he heads over there. Big party's happening. And lo and behold, Vanessa is there. Convertible girl. And then he gets introduced to her. He's like, hey, yo, Nick, she come over here a lot. And Nick's like, yeah, she goes to Bible study with my wife. Bible study, huh? He gets introduced to Vanessa. He goes over there and then there's like this awkward hand rub where he shakes her hand. He like rubs his thumb on the back of her hand for like five seconds. And she's like, can I get my hand back before I call 911? (laughs) Then they hang out all night and then they decide they want to see each other again. The next morning, they talk a little bit, and she sends him a video message, and he calls her. He's like, she's like, you're up early? And he's like, yeah, I'm always up this early. She's like, well, you want to go to church with me? And he's like, I'll take a rain check on that. I got some stuff to do. She comes over his house later to his mansion, and the cops are sitting outside in the van checking out this, what's going on. And they're they're looking through the binoculars, and Stephen Baldwin's like, not only does he have the money... But he gets all the pretty girls, too. And the other douche cop that's with him is like, am I detecting some jealousy there? And he's like, nah, when we get this guy locked up and I go home to a warm bed, he's going to be the jealous one. So she goes inside and checks out his house. It's got like eight bedrooms. And they just hang out there. So they hang out and uh, he goes back outside and he's like, you know, he tells the story of the silver convertible because he sees her car parked there. He's like, I got I got a funny story. I was chasing this girl in a convertible and I, and she was really hot. And my biggest regret is that I didn't get to meet her. She's like, what kind of car was it? And he's like, a silver convertible Sebring. So there's some more product placement. But, but you know, I got mad respect for Vanessa because silver Sebring is also what Michael Scott drives. Regional manager dunder mifflin scranton and that's also where they have their first kiss right out there at her car so good old jaw rule decides he's going to go surprise vanessa at work and you want to take a guess where she works at a christian bookstore of course and it's like packed there's like a hundred people in there like that ever happens at any christian bookstore but it's like wall to wall she's like yeah we got christian graphic tees we got the hottest new christian rap you never heard christian rap before and he's like, nah. And then they, she grabs the CD and shows it to him. And it's T-Bone. The rapper T-Bone. With his face on the CD and face on the inside cover. His friend is T-Bone. 
So he doesn't make any comment like, oh, this sort of looks like my best friend in this movie who is played by T-Bone. He doesn't acknowledge that whatsoever. He's just like, oh, T-Bone, cool. Dude, it's your friend's twin. She's like, you should come meet my family. And he's like, all right, then. So he goes to meet her family. And her younger sister answers the door and seemingly wants to fuck him. She's like, damn, who this? He's like, I'm here for Vanessa. She's like, mm, all right, I'll go get her. And then the other sister comes in, and she seems nice and normal. Then Vanessa's dad comes up, and he's all awkward, but also seems like a nice dude. He's like, Miles Montego? That sounds like a secret agent name. And he's like, well, I'm no agent. What you see is what you get. Then we meet Vanessa's mother, who's a grade-A bitch. She's like, your Miles? He reaches out his hand to shake her hand. And she doesn't even shake it. She's like, where do you go to church, Miles? He's like, I'm between churches. And she's all disappointed as hell. And then they leave. So now it's on to the club, baby. And the club, you guessed it, they're bumping T-Bone on the loudspeakers. I used to be in the streets, but now I'm saved. Or something like that. Like That's every song, pretty much. Jerry Rice makes a cameo for absolutely no reason. NFL legend wide receiver Jerry Rice, who is an even worse actor than anyone else in the movie so far. Hello, I am Jerry Rice. Nice to meet you. And then Vanessa's like, you know Jerry Rice? My dad's going to be so pumped that I met Jerry Rice. And he's like, yeah, yeah, he's cool. Jerry's cool. So that was a point, little pointless scene. I guess Jerry Rice just wanted to be in a movie. So he's there. He's hanging out with his crew. And he introduces Vanessa to everybody, and they immediately start telling the stories of when Ja Rule used to be a gangbanger. Yeah, that, this one time he was hanging out the side of his car, bop, 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 just shooting people. And I'm like, Jesus. And then Ja Rule's like, hey, man, let's go to the bar for a second. And he takes all of his boys up there to the bar, and he's like, just cut it out, man. You guys trying to make me look stupid? You look, trying to make me look like a psycho or something like that? I can't remember the line. And back at the table, the girls are like, so, you're with Miles, huh? Is what they say true? And she's like, we haven't had sex yet. And they're like, y'all taking it slow? Miles is taking it slow. They're like, y'all ain't fucking. You ain't fucked him. The movie doesn't cuss, obviously. It's a Christian movie, but I'm going to add my own little lines in there. You ain't fucking Miles. No, nah, we ain't. We ain't. So they get in the car, they leave, and, and Ja Rule's like, I'm sorry you had to see that. Those people don't know how to act. I'm sorry they was talking about my past. She's like, what kind of past do you have? And then he's like, I know this place with great coffee and pie. And so they go to this little diner. And he starts talking about his past. And he's like, those people that you met tonight, they used to work for me. Work for you how, Miles? I was dealing drugs. And then she's like, that's a lot to take in. But he's like, but I've changed. I don't do that life anymore. I was afraid if I told you that you wouldn't give me a chance. And then they do this lean over the table kiss. And she's like, you know, your story, it almost sounds like a testimony that somebody would use about to tell their story about how God brought them out of that. But that's the, th that's the whole thing. Like he just, he stopped doing what he was doing. He stopped dealing drugs, but he wasn't even like, he didn't have any sort of relationship with God. He wasn't a Christian. He just decided that not dealing drugs is probably a better lifestyle. Probably keeps him safer, keeps him out of trouble. But here she is being like, God did this thing. He's like, you know, maybe you think you might want to come to one of my shows? So he's not a rapper in this movie, but he does these promotions. He puts on the, these large productions. And she's like, yeah. And so here they go to his big show. It's like this funk show thing that he puts on, and they're walking in. It never even shows, not even for one second, like, inside. The show, the music, nothing. This whole big thing, his whole career, his whole everything, and they don't even show one second of it. All they show is them walking into the theater, and then that's it. And then it shows them, that him and his boys are all counting fat stacks of money. And they do the slow motion, five deep walk scene where they're all walking out. 
like gangsters, which is actually kind of cool, but also very corny. They get up to the hotel room and talk a little bit, build that relationship. And then she's like, I guess it's about time for bed. And he's like, ha yeah. And they get off the couch and they're, he's about to walk into the bedroom with her. And she's like, where are you going? And then she makes him sleep on the couch. This dude is paying for the hotel room and you're making him sleep on the couch while you get the king bed. Not cool. Then we get to one of the weird scenes in the movie where they're they're shopping. Ja Rule and Vanessa, they're walking down the street. They're buying all kinds of stuff. And then this girl comes up named Celine and she goes and gives Ja Rule a kiss on the cheek. And she's like, how you doing? Where you been? And uh, Vanessa just gets mad out of nowhere. She's like, the kids are ready. Wheels up at six. Come on, we got to go. And all because this girl just says hi. And he's like, hey, this, he didn't introduce, he introduces, he's like, hey, this is Vanessa. But then like, she gets irrationally mad because this girl knows him. And she, she's like, did you sleep with her? And he's like, yeah. And then she's like, why did I even ask? And he's like, well, why did you? But it's like, he can't have a past. He just met you. And you're mad at him because he slept with some girl before you? How does that even make any sense? Here comes the conflict. They roll up to the next show. I don't know if it's the next day or a couple of days later. They're rolling up to Miles' big next show that they're not going to show us either. They get to the parking lot, and there T-Bone is breaking some dude's window open because he owes him money. And Ja Rule's like, hold on. He gets out of the car, and he gets guns. He gets his gun out and goes over there and like shuts the shit down. And he's like, get out of here, all right? You think it's a game? Like, This is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be like, you think it's a fucking game? And then I remembered that that's not a Jaw Rule song. It's DMX. But that's the first thing that popped in my head was him just going, you think it's a game? You think it's a fucking game? Because just the way he screams, get out of here. And I was like, oh, that's DMX. Sometimes I get their songs confused because they both do that same type of yell scream rap of which i actually am a fan they go inside the hotel room and she's like crying and stuff and saying that he could have been killed and like why did you have a gun miles you could have died and and then she then they just start praying and then guess what it's ja rule's birthday and they go over vanessa's house and the bitch mom is still there they all, the whole family gives Miles a present, and it's a Bible with his name on it. It's even got my name on it and everything. And then, of course, the mom, a.k.a. Debbie Downer, immediately shuts shit down, and she's like, You know, Miles, as a family, we pray for Vanessa to find herself a godly man. Are you that godly man? And it's just awkward as shit, and Ja Rule's like, I don't know. And then they all just like look at the floor. Awkward. We have another cop scene where they're like looking through their binoculars at Jaw Rule. They're just, they're just keeping a close eye on him. They got a real hard on for him. And more bad music, of course. But it's like he's been out of the drug game for two years. How bad are these cops? How terrible are they if they're still following him around and he hasn't done any drug dealing in two years? Cut to Ja Rule and Vanessa cooking dinner or breakfast. I'm not really sure. But she's like, so tomorrow after church, do you want to do this and that and go hang out with my family? And he's like, yeah, about church. I'm actually uh, not going. She gets all pissed off at him. Like, what you got against church? Of course, forcing church upon him because that's what they do. And he's like, God don't want somebody like me. And she gets all sweet. Uh, cause I guess she thought that he was like not wanting to go to church because he just didn't want to go. He didn't like church, but it comes down to the fact that he just doesn't think he's good enough. And she's like, she's like, Oh, you dumb son of a bitch. Like she, she says, I don't want to like offend you or make you feel dumb, but God has a bigger plan than that. She's basically saying, Oh, you stupid fuck. Don't you know that God is willing to take anybody in? And then she's like, Actually, the Bible is better than a lot of things, better than sex. And he's like, it better be a good book then. Baby girl, put it on me. 
I'm sorry for that. So he finally goes to church with her. And here comes the worship pastor pulling up in a white Lamborghini. And then they start passing the offering plate around or bag. Ja Rule throws down 500 bucks. Which I guess, with the money he makes, I guess five thousand or 500 bucks is probably not enough when it comes to a tithe. I was like, damn, that's a lot of money. But now that I'm thinking about it, I guess it probably was about right. Or maybe even not enough. She's like, I'll teach you about the offering later. Like, constantly talking down to him, constantly making him feel like he's stupid as shit for not knowing this stuff about church. Church is over, and, like, they, they go meet up with the worship pastor, and he's like, he's like, you're a pastor, and you're driving a white Lamborghini? And then the pastor's like, the Bible doesn't say anything about style being a sin. Except that part where it says that rich people won't enter heaven that it's like passing through the eye of a needle. But, you know, forget about that part. Vanessa finally meets Ja Rule's parents, and his mom is, of course, overcome with joy. She's like, you don't know how hard I've been praying for this boy. I just hate the, the way that they always make it look like if somebody's not a Christian, then they're less of a person. And it's just what this and all Christian movies do. Vanessa starts talking to him about the Bible, and this is... Actually, kind of one of my favorite parts of this movie because Ja Rule is just being honest and he's like, and being cautious. And he says, you know, I'm still researching everything because she's like grilling him about giving his life to God. And he's like, I'm still researching. He even asks the question. He's like, if God is all loving, then why does he allow stuff like rape and murder? And she just completely dodges that question. And her only answer to that is, you've clearly been given this a lot of thought. That's the answer, really? And then he talks about the Quran, like how he saw something on TV about the Quran, and he was watching that. And she, all she, her only question to that is, well, how did that make you feel? And then she says, well, whenever you're ready. So it's like, basically, go ahead and question things, and go ahead and you know look into other religion stuff. But whenever you're ready to to come to the truth, then you know come on to the truth. Now it's Christmas time, and Ja Rule and Vanessa have a present for his mom. Guess what you, Guess what it is? Can you guess? It's a trip to Sandals Resorts. She's like, I finally get to go to, turn to camera, Sandals Resorts. More plugging. You know, this movie is actually more and more like The Office now that I think about it. The Silver Sebring, the trip to Sandals, that's, that's in The Office too. If you know anything about me, you know that I love The Office, and I will talk about it all the time. I might actually just turn this into an Office podcast. Nah, nah, I'm not going to do that. Maybe. Nah. And Ja Rule, he starts reading his Bible more and more. He's reading Song of Solomon out loud to uh, to Vanessa, and he's like, man, this is sexual. And of course, she instantly sex shames him. She's like, oh, what? You think that it's okay to have sex? And he's just reading the Bible out loud, and she's like, I can almost assure you that that they're married. And he gets all, like, offended. Just forget it. Just forget it. And he goes and takes a cold shower, I guess, to stop to stop himself from thinking about sex. I guess out of anger or just frustration, he goes by himself to the club, and uh, or without Vanessa, but his boys are there. Walk in the club, there's more T-bone bumping on the, on the speakers. I once was in the streets, but now I'm saved. I changed my life. And now I get paid for Christian rapping. That's a little freestyle for you. I don't think that's actually a T-Bone song. And T-Bone's like, he can sense Ja Rule's frustration. He's like, all right, bring the ladies in. All the ladies come in. And Ja Rule goes off with one of them. And, of course, in a very cliche way, Vanessa comes to the club because she's like, wait, wait. You know, she's coming to see Ja Rule and, and console him. And he's like, she catches him there with that girl. Even though he's not doing anything, he's just like got his head on her shoulder. But Vanessa, of course, assumes the worst and leaves. She gets in the car and she's like, God, God, help me. And the very next scene is like Ja Rule's mom in the hospital bed dying. So it's like, I'm wondering, is that supposed to be like an answered prayer? Vanessa's like, help me. And then all of a sudden his mom is like stricken with this terminal illness. Like one like one day she's 
happy about San- her sandals trip, and then the next day she's almost dead. And the mom is talking to Vanessa. She's like, take care of Ja Rule for me. And then she dies. And it's more bad acting. <laughs> like the, It shows the flat line. And then Ja Rule's like, Ma! 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 Three times. She doesn't respond. It's like, dude, she's dead. You know she's dead. And like everybody's crying and it's just really bad acting. Well, the cops are hanging out at the funeral because that's normal. They're like in a van watching. And then the douche cop, not the not Stephen Baldwin, but the other one, has like one of the worst lines in the movie. He's like, looks like a nice party. I mean, what kind of heartless fuck says that at a funeral for the dude's mom? And Stephen Baldwin was like, have some respect for the dead. And douche cop's like, what, you want to send some flowers or something? And they have a conversation about God. Stephen Baldwin's like, do you believe in God? And then he talks about how he does, of course. And so Stephen Baldwin's character is starting to like think that Ja Rule's character is actually not guilty of all this shit. And here we have the first scene where Vanessa's mom is not a stone-cold bitch. She comes over to Ja Rule and she's like, gives this half ass apology. I guess I haven't been the easiest person to talk to. Well, bitch, you fucking didn't shake his hand. You said, you're Miles? And you've been treating him like an ass clown this whole time. So yeah, you haven't been the be- uh, the most understanding person. And then she says, you may not always understand why God does certain things, but I can assure you it's all part of one big plan for your life. So God let Ja Rule's mom die because it's part of a bigger plan. So does that mean that prayer doesn't work then? Is everything part of a plan? Or is it not part of a plan? Does he, does God know that you're going to pray? And so he knows like whether they're going to be answered or not. It's a mystery. So she's starting to come around to Ja Rule. And he goes over to their house and asks for their blessing to ask her to marry him. I want to spend the rest of my life with her. And so it happens to be her birthday too. So he's taking her out for her birthday. Like they get on this private jet and they go f- flying out. And well, that's what you do on jets. Hey, Kevin, that's what you do on jets. You, you, they fly. So he looks out the window and he's like, you know what I see? He's looking at the sunset. He turns to her. He's like, you know what I see? What, baby? I see God, baby. Then he says, I see a world with no limits. With the right drive and hustle, anybody can have anything and everything they want. Can they, though? Can they, though, Ja Rule? Can anybody have anything they want? People born in poverty, people born in third world countries, can they truly have anything they want? Or is that just some cliche thing that people who do have everything they want say? So Ja Rule says, I can't picture a future without you. And he proposes to her on the plane. His buddies all get popped by the cops because they're looking at all of them, and they see a transaction go down between T-Bone and somebody else, so they go arrest all four of his friends. And then they call Ja Rule, and he bails them all out. And and he's like, what'd you tell them? Because they're like, hey, man, they're after you. And he's like, what'd you tell them? And they're like, nothing. So they all basically say they're not going to rat him out for his past. And plus... I guess there's really not much on him now since he's been out of the game for a while. Ja Rule gets a phone call and it's Vanessa's sister saying that Vanessa has been in a really bad car accident. Ja Rule rushes down to the hospital and here's where some more bad acting comes into play. Instead of rushing in there being all like panicked and sad and like freaking out, he busts the door open. He's like, where is she? He's all like mad and doesn't make any sense. It, the acting in that scene just makes no sense at all. Then he talks to the doctors, and the doctor's like, uh, she's in a coma. We're doing all we can to save her. And he was like, uh, we can hope. All we can do is hope that she comes out of the coma. And he's like, hope? You're telling me to hope? And they're saying to pray. Which is it? He gets really mad at God, and he talks about how um, God let his mom die. And he's like, I guess he's just out to lunch. And he storms off. He goes into the chapel 
Is that what you call it at, at the hospital? That's probably that might not be the right word. Anyway, he goes in there and he starts just yelling at God, saying that he's trying to live his life right and he's changed and why is God doing all this shit? And he's like, put like put me take me in, instead of her, take me instead of her. And he says one of my favorite lines of the whole movie. You want to send me to hell? Book the flight. Book the flight. I just fucking love that line. And then he says, sorry. Basically, he he yells at God and then he says, sorry, God, I didn't mean that. I'm just, I'm just hurt. Poor Ja Rule, actually, he really can't catch a break. Think about it. His mom died. His friends are getting arrested. His girlfriend is in a coma now. Then he leaves. And there are like 147 cops outside of his house. And they tell him to, you know, get on his knees and they cuff him. And they take him in for questioning. You got these two dorky, awful cops trying to like lay it down for him and and say that even if he's not doing anything wrong anymore, if he got money from uh, drug dealers to fund his business, that he's going to be in trouble too. And then the main the main boss cop goes in there and he's like or the chief or whatever the fuck you want to call him goes in there and he says he starts talking about sin and he's like I'm going to leave and then I'm going to come back and you'll give your confession and Ja Rule like slams the table and throws the papers off he got again irrationally mad about something it didn't even make any sense and then that's just it they just let him go after that so it's really anticlimactic with the cops like they're after him this whole time they they arrest his friends they bring him in and then they just let him go and that's it that's all we the last we see of the cops at all in this movie ja Rule goes back to the hospital vanessa's in her coma he prays for her to get out of the coma she eventually comes out of it he goes to church he gives his life to jesus and he writes letters to his boys in prison talking about You know, you guys are going to be out soon and blah, blah, blah. And they show this like, like little montage of them as friends and like them when they're kids and stuff. It's like trying to make us care about these characters and not once during this movie. Is there any reason that we should really care about his buddies? But it's like this huge major scene at the end where like we're, we're supposed to give two shits about his friends, I guess. And then he's like, and y'all are going to be an uncle soon. So he, Vanessa's having a baby. They get married. They have the baby. And at the very end of the movie, she's like talking to the baby. She's like, or the, it's three years later. So she's talking to their three-year-old like, daddy's about to preach. And the movie ends with Ja Rule being up on the, at the pulpit. Like, we're going to, today, I'm, I'm Pastor Miles. And today, we're going to talk about change. And then the end. So it was a grueling two hours to get through bad acting, bad music, bad everything, horrible dialogue, the 6% Rotten Tomatoes don't lie. If you enjoyed the podcast, please rate and review on Apple Podcasts. Doing that will help get the podcast out to more people. I'll see you next week for more Christian Cringe.